Walls is the first governor to be a Democratic vice president nominee in 100 years, more than. He is scheduled to appear later today in Philadelphia with Harris. Here to discuss how this impacts the race for the White House is Larry Sabato, director of the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia, uh, which has done very well in the Olympics, by the way. I must point that out as, a, as an alum. Uh, and our Washington yep. correspondent, Megan Casella, joins us on set. Larry, let me start with you. What is it that you think uh, put Waltz over the top? Well, it could have been process of elimination. <laughs> you can never eliminate that as a possibility in, in presidential or vice presidential selection. But I think uh, partly it's because, as the Democrats have been telling us, it's about chemistry between Kamala Harris and the person she wanted to pick as her uh, running mate and potentially governing mate during the next four years. So that that probably explains most of it. How about you, uh, Megan? Do you do you see it that way? In other words, it's probably chemistry or maybe a process of elimination that there was a reason not to pick Governor Shapiro of uh, of Pennsylvania. Maybe a reason not to pick. Uh, any of the others who were on the short list? I think that's right. She was really looking for somebody that she vibed with, for lack of a better way of saying it, that she was looking for compatibility, and she definitely found that uh, in Walls from everything I'm hearing. And there was, you know, he doesn't have negatives in the way that some of these other candidates had. They were worried about some of this. There was an opposition campaign against Josh Shapiro. There was an old sexual assault allegation from about an aide in his office. There was uh, concerns that he was maybe too moderate, or unions weren't a fan of him because of support for private school vouchers. And there there was some concern that maybe he was too supportive of Israel in a way that would uh, jeopardize, in some people's view, the administration, the future administration's handling uh, of conflict over there, of the war. And so Walls didn't have those negatives. There's a question of whether he had as many positives as some of those folks. Mainly, I'm thinking about he doesn't come from a big state that's going to bring a big electoral prize. It's not a swing state. He's, it's not, not, a swing he's state. not. He's not bringing Pennsylvania with him necessarily exactly. the way Shapiro might have. Exactly. Which Larry brings me back to that. I kind of thought Shapiro would be the choice. He's forceful. He's from a swing state. He's popular in that state. Well, you're right. I think that that's why he was the betting favorite. Favorite. All the uh, the betting sites uh, had him as a heavy favorite, at least the last time I looked. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point, Senator Kelly, Mark Kelly from Arizona, was second, but also quite high. Walls was way behind a number of others. Uh, even Pete Buttigieg was ahead of, of uh, Walls uh, at a certain point. So it's a surprise. But, you know, if you look at vice presidential history, there have been lots of surprises. Some of them work out well. Some of them don't. And we'll, we'll have to see. This, this uh, campaign will tell the tale. Now we turn our attention to uh, the convention, which is next week, the week after. It's coming up quickly, and that was partly what kind of pushed her to make the, this decision now. And then what? We don't know yet if there's going to be these September debates or singular events or whatnot. It's all up in the air, and then, of course, there could be an October surprise, as it's known. But the convention two weeks from now uh, in Chicago will be sort of the big event. And it's going to be actually more important than usual for the Democrats this year, because both of these candidates will really be introducing themselves. Harris, slightly better known on the national stage. Walls, not hugely known on the national stage. So a lot of work there to do for the party to introduce them. And they also really want to carry that to, for sort of an enthusiasm bump. They have this very shortened campaign, but the benefit of it, I was talking with someone about this just earlier this week, it's a major benefit for them in a lot of ways. There's just no time to lose enthusiasm. There's no time to get distracted. So they really want to seize on the convention. They're going to seize on those debates, whether they happen or not. This, the fact that they didn't happen, perhaps, to just sort of keep driving interest and enthusiasm and hopefully all the way through November for that. Larry, I, I guess, as, as Megan points out, the convention will be an opportunity for uh, Kamala Harris to introduce herself. It will also be an opportunity for her perhaps to lay out policy. We don't know much about what her policies are and how they might differ from uh, Joe Biden's policies, um, and, and maybe she'll start to explain some of that. You and I haven't spoken uh, since uh, Biden pulled out. I was on vacation for some of that time. What, did, what does Harris mean to the Democrats' chances in the fall? Well, she dramatically improved them. <laughs> They were headed, and, and this came from within the Democratic Party, with access to a lot of private polling information, with Joe Biden, whether he wants to admit it or his aides want to admit it, the Democrats were headed to a landslide, landslide defeat in the Electoral College. 
uh, Harris has restored the Democrats. This is a tie. I mean, it could go either way, and you could argue the Electoral College makes uh, Trump uh, the favorite in a tie situation. I don't know. It's too early to say. But the Democrats are in this race, and they were out of this race when Biden was still in it. So it's meant a lot. Uh, and the other factor, and Megan referred to this, and you did too, Tyler, the, the amazing thing is people know very, very little about uh, Kamala Harris. And, of course, they know even less about Tim Walls. I, I've had calls from all over the globe, and the question they're all asking in one form or another is, <laughs> Tim, you know, yeah. the last time we had this was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy who? Uh, they just never heard of him, know nothing about him, and, and that can be an advantage. You know, it's uh, it, the more you know, uh, you know, uh, contempt uh, there creeps in, right? Familiarity breeds contempt, and you never know what's going to come out, yeah. as J.D. Vance has discovered. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. How will Kamala Harris's policies different from differ from Biden's, and how will they differ from the policies that Kamala Harris ran on in 2020 when she was a candidate and quite a staked out a progressive position on most issues? Folks, we're going to talk about this uh, for the next couple of months, I think, don't Indeed. you all? Indeed. Larry, I hope. Larry I hope you bet, so. man. Larry, good to see you. <laughs> Megan Casella, thanks. Good to see you in the